Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, not really designed inspiration or inspired by anything, but is is functionality that you can add to any website or a website that you are creating. So what we're building today is a calendar. And this is just a very simple, basic calendar built with ACF. And I've never used ACF until this week. <laughs> So we are adding a little bit of code to make this calendar be updated to the current date as the days progress. Basically, always is up to date. And let's get into it and you will see what I'm talking about. All right, so the first thing you want to do if you don't have ACS installed is basically install it. So you would go to appearance, go to plugins and add new plugin. And I'm gonna look for ACF, yes. And this is the one that you have to install activate it i already have it activated and you will see it it will appear here on the left hand side in your dashboard so we can go there and as you can see i already have uh, created a custom post type which is events obviously and fields for these events so let's go to create a new custom post type and i am going to name it different than events because we already have events so i'm gonna say meetings and we have to set this to singular and the post type key is going to be meeting and if you want this to be visible on the front end and in the admin dashboard then leave it ticked basically but i don't want it on the front end i just want to have it shown here in the dashboard that's it so i have added it as you can see it's here one thing that you could do to make it nicer prettier instead of having this pin oops pin icon we can add a custom icon so you would go to visibility and go down to menu icon go to dash icon class names and look for whatever icon you want so i'm gonna say meeting there's nothing i'm gonna add calendar all right so i'm gonna go click on this one copy the code for it and i'm gonna go back to my menu icon and i'm gonna drop it in here and if you want for this custom post type to be a little bit higher in the dashboard position uh you could say i don't know five i think five would yeah it's right under posts and it makes sense to be here so we have it right here and now this is create so now that we have saved it we have all these options and the option that we are going to be working today with is going to be fields so i'm gonna add fields to our meetings custom post all right so go to field groups and we are going to add a new group of fields to our custom post type so we want first of all to have a date and the second is going to be the location so i'm gonna look for the date and it's called date picker i'm gonna choose this one you can add a date picker and time i think it's called but we are working with this and the code is customized for this all right so i'm gonna call this date and this is going to be date as well and also let's name the field group i'm gonna say meeting fields okay and choose uh, your date format i like this one and i'm gonna leave it as week starts on monday and let's add another field and this time it's going to be location so for location we're going to leave it as text but if you have more text in terms of location you can say i think it's called ah it's a text area but honestly any location is sufficient to have a field that's called text and it's just a text line so let's call this location and this one is going to be location and if all value i'm going to leave it as is empty so let's save our changes and all is good actually i'm gonna add another field and this time it's going to be an image i want to have an image for my event and here it is and image and image now let's go to settings so we want our post type to be equal to our meeting so you would have to match it basically with your custom post type just keep that in mind and hit save and now our fields are saved we can go and add some events 
basically to our calendar so we could just say for the date let's put something in the past because this is very helpful you will see what i mean if you have a list of events for the year basically and you start at the beginning of the year listing all your events for the year you don't want all that event list to be shown on the website so you want to have a few events shown and basically current and future events nothing in the past so this list would be updated with the current date all right so i'm gonna set this event for first of march and location miami very random anyway so let's add an image to it i'm gonna add this one and i am going to ah i need to add a title to it miami oops event March. This is something that you will not see on the front end. This is just for the back end and you could add as much information as you want here so you know what events uh, are listed in because it's easier to keep an eye on them and change them as you wish. So if you go to, let's go back to our events and it, as you can see here you could add even the date so you know the order of the events. It would be easier this way. All right, so I'm going to continue adding more events and I'll I will come back after that. All right, now that we have our events, we have six events set, two in the past and four in the future, we can move on to Elementor. All right, let's add our loop grid. And let me give it a little bit space on top. 150, okay. So let's create our template. This is going to be easy peasy. Let's create our structure first of all. And now I'm going to be adding post info. So this is what we're going to be using for our date and location. So I removed everything else and I will just customize this. Use the type custom, custom dynamic tags and look for ACF and ACF field. So go to the wrench icon and look for location first of all it's not showing but we will fix this okay so i am going to add a custom icon as well and this is going to be location this change the color you don't see anything right now but i promise it will work all right i am going to duplicate this and this is going to be still custom and we're going to switch this to date and i am also going to add a custom icon and it's going to be a calendar go with this one change the color to the same color orange okay it's fine that is set okay so what is the problem why this is not showing because we need to go to the loop item settings and set this to be meetings instead of posts and apply and as you can see you see them now all right another thing i want to do is add an image i'm not going to go with a featured image because this not have the dynamic tags option so i'm going to change and i'm going to add a, an image widget and do the same thing acf image field and go to the wrench and look for the key which is image Ta -da! okay so what i want to do is give it a little bit of a border radius because you know i hate these pointy corners so much all right so let's save it and 
okay now it's not showing what is going on so make sure that you are in the loop grid and go to query and the source should be meetings not posts and now you can see them all yeah these images are a little bit too small but you get the idea right so let's see all right so all our events are in descending order let's put them to ascending so as you can see they start obviously from march until the last event which is in september okay so we need to change that because we don't want to see all these events all year round we might have events 10 events per month can you imagine what would that would be people would have to constantly go through all the the events that you have to see the current events so that is not a very nice user experience okay one more thing that i want to add is pagination so i'm going to switch to load on cl click so basically you would have an option here where you would have a button and once you load uh, that would load more events Let's go to, to layout and I want to just have two events per column and items. Let's go to two or three, no, two. Okay, this is not very nice, but you get it. As I said, this is not going to be a design focused tutorial, but more functionality wise. All right, let me just publish this. And now we are going to bring in the code, but to do that, we need to have installed the snippets plugin, code snippets. So go to plugins, go to add new and look for code snippets. And this is the plugin that you need to install. I know that there is a way to add custom code in Elementor if you have Elementor Pro, but for some reason it was not working. This is PHP and I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. If you know, please let me know in the description below. And also I will have the code in the description below as always. All right, so once you install this, activate it as you usually do with plugins and go to your snippets. And I already have one created here. I will activate it and let's go to see the code. As you can see, I tried a few code snippets and let me tell you, I let ChatGPT create them for me to give me a head start. None of them were working really and I found some code on Stack Overflow and I tried to make it work. All right, so what you need to do is basically copy paste this code and make sure that what you change here, for example, the key, because we're working with the date, we are going to add the date here. So this word, you will find it in ACS in your fields. Go to edit and you have the date here and this is the field name that you need to add. So if it's different, let's say it's, I don't know, whatever, that you need to copy and add in that code, basically here, all right? And the date, this is very important because this was the thing that was not working in any of the codes that I had. I didn't know this but this is basically the default date format that acf has so it's not the one that you see basically let's go again to the date i was trying to insert this date format or this or this and nothing was working although i set them properly nothing was working so the answer was the default date format for some reason Anyway, so let's go back to our code. And in order to query this on the front end, basically we need to grab this filter underscore date. So you can name this whatever you want. This is up to you, but make sure that that's the one that you copy. All right, so I'm also going to comment this out because we don't need it. Let me save it. Also make sure once you add your code, that you save and activate your code because otherwise it's not gonna work and you're not gonna know why. <laughs> that happened to me in the past, so I learned my lesson. All right, so let's go back to our page and let's add our query ID here. 
and publish and make sure that you refresh the page and let's see and voila may 11th which is the current date today is 11 may 25th june 16th and september so these are the events that are current and future and we are not shown the past events let me just delete the filter data and as you can see again we have let me just publish all the events listed here so if we load more we see basically all the events i mean how cool is this i think it's pretty uh useful and i hope this will help you at some point in your life as a web designer because it uh, it's pretty time consuming to try to figure out things like this and i am here to help so let me know if you found this useful if you want to see more of these kind of videos and let's do this again and i will uh, make sure that i do because i will try to get more into customizing elementor more and more with functionality not only like beautiful things happening on the page but things that actually add functionality to the website or website this is so cool if you'd like to see what else you can build with elementor watch this playlist here and if you have gotten any value out of this video, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing this video. And I'll see you next time. Bye.